Well, open up your Bibles with me, if you would, to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. And uh, we're in a series called Rumors Revealed. Rumors Revealed. And uh, hundreds of years before the Messiah Jesus came to the earth, uh, the prophet Isaiah prophesies about what God is gonna be, be like, what, what characteristics is the Messiah gonna have. And in fact, it even said that, like some of his nicknames in there, it even said like what he would be called and how he would be thought of. In fact, last weekend, uh, we started this series where I talked about how hundreds of years, even before Jesus came, uh, one of his rumored nicknames would be that he would be the Prince of Peace. The, 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 that he would be the Prince of Peace. And last week we talked about how Jesus you know, shows up on the scene and he's calming the storms and he's healing people physically um, and bringing peace uh, to every situation uh, that he's in. And, uh, and then this week, I, I really wanna talk about another nickname uh, uh, of the Messiah was that he would be an everlasting father, an everlasting father. And I, I wanna preach today uh, from this title, the title of my message today is A Forever Father. Forever Father, and it's Luke chapter eight, verse 15. Reads like this, it says, now they were bringing even infants to him, to Jesus, that he might touch them and bless them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. Don't you love like when the disciples blow it in the Bible? It just really encourages me, makes me feel like I can be one of those two. It, it, I just, it's awesome. It says, and when the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. Uh, uh, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him saying, let the children come to me and do not hinder them for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God, like a child shall not enter it. And then Matthew chapter seven, verse seven through 11. This is Jesus talking and he says this. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and to the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Come on, let's pray together today over the preaching of God's word. God, uh, what an honor it is to be in your house. God, better is one day in your courts than a thousand anywhere else. And God, I pray that you would speak to us. And Lord, I pray that we would see you as a good father, that we would see you, God, in this light, and that it would literally change our relationship with you, that it would change our approach, it would change this encounter that we have with you. God, we love you, we need you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, uh, over the years of relationships, um, I've learned something um, that we really don't dedicate a lot of time to thinking about. In, in fact, we really don't uh, dedicate a lot of time strategy, strategizing about this. However, we all kind of, kind of do this, and there is a nuance to this reality, and it's what you call people. And, and now, we, you know, we, we tend to do this, and we don't give it much thought, but there is a lot of nuance as it pertains to what we call people, right? Because we have nicknames for people, we have short names for people, we have encouraging names for people, we have other names for people, right? right? You know, there's a nuance to what we call people. And I wrote down a few things that I think um, really matters as it pertains to what we call people. And the first one is this, is that what you call someone communicates proximity, it communicates the proximity of the relationship. This is why uh, there are some people, um, you know, that you know, um, that you have a nickname for, right? And, and what does that communicate? That communicates proximity of closeness. There's also times where, you ever met somebody, maybe you work with them or you go to school with them, and you met them, and when you met them, they told you their name. Like, like you said your name, and they told you their name, and there's somebody that you interact with on a relatively regular basis. And yet six months later, if somebody asked you what their name was, you wouldn't know it. Has this ever happened to you where, where, where you have too many? Now, I don't know at what point, you know, the interactions turn into a place where you can't ask for their name. But have you ever gotten to a place where, like, you've had too many interactions now? And so it would be awkward to say, hey, man, I'm sorry, what's your name? So instead we resort to things like, hey, bro. <laughs> hey, girl. Like we say things like that, right? We, 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 we resort 
to things. By the way, if someone is continually calling you bro or girl or man, they probably don't know your name. I'm just gonna tell you right now. They probably don't know your name. And by the way, this is like not in my notes, but this is just, um, I, I want everybody in Grace City Church uh, to have friends. I want you to have friends. That means a lot to me that you would have friends. So here's like, don't ever do this. Anytime somebody's done this to me, it's just a bad look. Don't ever do this. Don't ever go up to somebody and say, what's my name? You don't know my name, do you? What's my name? Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. If you see somebody struggling, throw them a lifeline, man. Like, like let them know, oh, it's, 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 it's Andrew. Oh, oh, and then let them go, let them lie to you and go, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, right? been times, right? And listen, you, you don't know their name because you're around them, but you guys aren't close, right? You, you're around them, but you're not in proximity and relationship enough to where you would know their name. What you call someone communicates proximity. Number two, what you call someone communicates understanding. It communicates understanding. It communicates what you understand about that person. For, for example, um, I, I have a pet peeve. And if you've done this to me, all good, no harm, no foul, not a big deal. Uh, but um, I, I have a pet peeve that when people introduce me, I don't like when people introduce me as Drew. Now, I'm okay with everybody in our church calling me Drew. I'm fine. A lot, a lot of people call me Drew. It's not like a, a name reserved for like the closest people in my life. It's just I'm okay with once you meet me once and you start calling me Drew. I'm, I'm cool with that. A lot of people do. Um, however, the reason why I don't like it when people introduce me as that, because I want people to know my name is Andrew, right? And so, so I want people, so I will literally, it's usually about five seconds of awkwardness, but I'll always correct it every time. So, so if someone's like, hey, this is my pastor, this is Drew, and I go, oh, it's Andrew, nice to meet you, right? It's a little awkward for a second, but it's okay. I can live with that little awkwardness. Because why? Because what you call somebody communicates understanding. That, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I want to know who this person is. Number three, what you, this is a big one, what you call someone communicates a habit or it communicates training. So, uh, um, for example, we, uh, we have a great family in our church, the Masons, love the Masons, uh, incredible family. And uh, BJ and Amy, they have two boys. And their boys are, one of them is a freshman in college, the other one is a uh, senior in high school. And, uh, and they are like, you ever meet somebody's kids and they're like too well behaved, it kind of makes you nervous. Anybody like, you're like, y'all are like too good. Like, like, I don't know what's going on. But, but their boys are like the kindest, nicest, like most well behaved, like whatever like Jedi mind trick they did on their boys. It's like, teach me your ways, right? They, they, they are like the nicest boys ever, right? And, and in fact, we were over at their house one time and we're eating dinner and, and uh, Logan, the oldest one, like, like he, he, he keeps... He keeps calling me sir, and it's driving me crazy after like the 17th time, right? So, so we're talking about like sports. We're not having like a very formal conversation, but every time he calls me sir, I'm like looking around for like the 82-year-old behind me. Like I'm like, I feel old every time you call me sir. Like I feel weird or like we're in the military or like I, I'm like, it's weird. so every time he keeps calling me sir. And after a while, I'm like, Logan, like man, I, like it's cool. It's cool, bro. You don't have to call me pastor. You don't have to call me sir. Like, we're hanging out. Like, we're just in the house right now. Um, uh, you, you can just call me Andrew or Drew, but you need to know my name is Andrew. Like, like you just, I, 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 you, know, you, you, uh, you know, you don't have to call me that. You don't, have to, you don't have to say sir. And right when I said that, he looked at his mom, and his mom goes, oh, yes, he does have to call you that. <laughs> He's been trained, right? What he calls people, what, it, it's been a habit. It's been, it's been ingrained into him. The other thing that I really believe is what you call someone speaks to how you see yourself. It speaks to how you see yourself. In fact, that's why a lot of times, by the way, when people are degrading to other people, it speaks to how they see themselves. When people can't speak highly of other people, it speaks to how they see themselves. Uh, you know, uh, we just had, so, okay, so we just had two kids. And now there is a moment that I'm looking forward to uh, with uh, Adriana and Justice. I'm really looking forward to the moment that one of them, and eventually both of them, calls me dad or daddy or dada or some variation, right? I, I'm really looking forward to that moment. In fact, I already told Christina, the first of them, whether it's Adriana or Justin, the first one that does it will get a double portion for the rest of their life. <laughs> Just their allowance will be double. They're gonna get nicer shoes. They're gonna get twice, twice as many Christmas presents. They're gonna be confused as to why this is the case, but it is biblical. Read the Old Testament. Like, they'll get a double portion. First one that does it. They don't even know, but it's setting the, the course for the rest of their life, right? 
And, and, and the reason why I can't wait for that moment isn't because once that happens, am I going to go, oh my goodness, I'm their dad. Like I'm of, like, you know, of the maturity that I already know I'm their dad. Like I, I, I know this, I know I'm their dad. The reason why that will be so exciting to me is because when they call me that, it will show me that they're starting to understand our relationship. And based on them calling me dad, they are starting to understand that, oh, I, you are my dad, which would make me your child. And, and so whatever you call someone, it communicates how you perceive and see yourself in relation to that person. And so today, here's what you gotta to understand today. If you're in this room, here's what you have to understand. You have to understand that you are a child of God. That you are a child of God. Some of you, you, you didn't grow up as that being a habit in terms of how you saw yourself. You didn't grow up in church. You didn't, in fact, even when I said that, you're kinda of like, well, that, that, that's kinda, of, that's kind of, you didn't grow up as that being a habit. Some of you, that's not how you see yourself. And so it's hard for you to call God Father. It's, it's hard to think of him in terms of him being a heavenly father because that is not how you see yourself. But if you're gonna step into that relationship, here's my point, my only point today is this. When we claim that we are children, more specifically children of God, we are claiming dependency, authority, and security is found in our heavenly father. So, so when we step into a relationship and we say, okay, God, God you, you are my father, Right? You know, and, and like let's let's stick with fa- let's stick with father, right? You ever been in prayer and somebody uses daddy? <laughs> whoa, whoa, all right, all right. right? <laughs> so so when we step into relationship with God, Father, when we when we when we step into that relationship, we are claiming dependency, authority, and security is found in our heavenly father. Luke chapter 18, verse 15. It says they were bringing infants to Jesus because they wanted him to bless them. Disciples saw it, they rebuke the people that are doing this. But Jesus, says, but Jesus says to them, let the children come to me and don't hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. It's interesting, whoever doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will not be able to enter it. There have been things during the course of my life that have, when I did them, instantly made me feel older. You ever have things in, in your world that like instantly, like for example, um, I never feel older because of a birthday. I feel older because of certain activities. So for example, uh, when I turned 16, I didn't feel older when I turned 16. I felt older when I was by myself behind the wheel and I had my driver's license and I was driving my mom's minivan listening to Tupac Shakur. Like that's when... <laughs> That's when I felt older. Like that was a moment where, I, where all of a sudden I went, wow, like, like I'm, I, I'm getting older. I, I, I remember um, the first ticket that I purchased to an R-rated movie. Now it wasn't that I didn't sneak into R-rated movies before that, but, but, uh, but it was just, I remember the first time I, I show up and buy a ticket and you almost want them to check your ID because now you're legit, you know what I mean? Like, and, and so, you know, it's not like you bought a ticket to The Lion King and you went and saw Saw, you know what I mean? Like it's like, not that kind of environment, but you just like, man, I wish you would check my ID, right? Because you're of age, you, you felt older. I, I, I remember the first time that Christina, that we bought our first home. Like, man, it, it felt weird. It's like we're married and we just bought a home and I instantly felt older, but I still kind of felt like I'm waiting for the adults to get there too. Like I'm waiting for someone to come and take over their house and I'm done house sitting. Like it was, it was kind of weird. But then there's things that happen. They make you feel older, but not in a good way. You know, like you, you just feel old, you know, uh, this happened actually <laughs> this last summer. Um, now, uh, Christina posted something, you know, Christina, and I, you know, Christina posted something on, on Instagram and, and here's what we didn't know up until this point. We were largely unaware that um, emojis don't always mean what they actually are. We were largely unaware of this. We, we, we didn't know that there was an, a whole emoji language. Like now if you're over 30 in this room, you're probably with me. You're like, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't really know, right? And, um, and we were confused. And so, so Christina posts something on social media, right? Um, and she uses a certain emoji uh, that represents, um, from what I'm told, uh, anatomy. And she, po- and, and, and she posts this, and um, um, because in fact, it, it, I think it was at the time like our, our kids were about the size of 
this emoji, right? And, 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 uh, and so she posts it. Oh, X amount of weeks pregnant. Our children are the size of this emoji. And, um, and, 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 uh, and so all of a sudden, my phone gets blown up. I get like text messages and like, you know, uh, uh, you know John Lorenzo's calling Julie. Uh, uh, um, Julie's calling Christina. Uh, uh, this was a big deal uh, in our world. And, uh, and, 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 and Julie calls me like, I'm, like, all of a sudden, like I'm supposed to know. She's like, did you see Christina's post? And I'm like, no, what? And she goes, oh, well, she, she used this emoji. And I was like, I don't get it. I, like, I still don't get it. And then she told me what it was. Nothing made, I, I don't think I felt that old in a long time. Like it's just, like all of our high school and college kids are, are, are freaking out. So, so we deleted it. We deleted it. And, and, and then there are other times. And then there are other times where you kind of feel old, but something happens that makes you feel small. You know, like, like, like you feel old, but, but, but something happens. And in, in fact, I, I remember um, uh, I was, uh, uh, um, driving home from something one time and, uh, and me and some interns, we were like racing. Now we weren't like drag racing. We were going two separate ways to kind of get back to the church, but we were going a little faster than we normally do. And, uh, and so, I, so I jump in the car and, and they're going one direction. They're going, I'm, uh, they're going one way, I'm going the other way. And I'm driving through like a residential area and, 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 and I, I get to the church and I win. I get there before uh, our intern and this is when I was pastor in the Seattle area. And, uh, and I get there and I'm parked. And all of a sudden this car pulls up next to me. And this guy is going off on me. I, I mean, he's yelling through like my, the window. And so I roll down my window to, to hear what he's saying. And he's going off because I was driving faster than he liked and faster than I should, ha should have through his neighborhood. And he's going ballistic. Now, as a parent, I understand it a lot more than I did at the time. And, and, and he is going off. And I felt like I was like 10 years old, right? Because, because, you know, like, you know, just when you're in the wrong and you have no defense, it's just like, I'm ugly, you're good looking, I'm stupid, you're smart. You just, you, you just like, oh. And, and when I rolled down my window, he recognized me. That was the worst part. I rolled down my window, he goes, dude, you're a pastor at my church. My kids play in this neighborhood. I mean, I couldn't have felt worse. I could not have felt worse in my life. I felt like I was 10 years old getting owned for something, right? Rightfully so. There are times and moments in our life where this stuff like tends to happen. Now, here's the reality. Getting older is a good thing, but maturing is even better. Getting older is a good thing, but you ever met somebody that's getting older, but they're not maturing? Right? They're like 24 and they act like they're still 14. They're like 34 and they still act like they're 14. <laughs> like 44 and 50. Come on, you ever see somebody, they're just getting older, but they're not maturing. They're still getting engaged in gossip. They're still getting easily irritated. They're still, it's like they're getting older, but they're not maturing. Listen, a huge part of maturing in Christ, a huge part of maturing as a believer is not thinking that you can ever grow beyond being a son or daughter of God. That is a huge part of growing as a person and as a follower of Jesus. In fact, the disciples thought they were doing grown folks business. All these kids start coming to Jesus. And they're like, hey, hey, no, 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 man, get these kids out of here. We're doing like grown folks business. We're, we're, we're doing adult business. And Jesus stops them and goes, you, are, you missed it. You think you're a grown folk. Actually, actually, unless you become like them, unless you continually are aware that you are a child of God, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you and I gotta be careful to not think that we're maturing beyond our desperation and our need to have a heavenly father. In fact, it goes on in Matthew chapter seven, where Jesus kinda has this moment, and I believe that the kingdom of God could almost be summed up, summed up in asking, seeking, and knocking. It says this, it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. For, who everyone, for everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be open. We oftentimes wanna come across as more self-sufficient than we actually are, don't we? In fact, we spend a lot of time trying to create a facade like we have it more together than we actually do. This is, by the way, why I get so frustrated sometimes where things are going on in people's life and either, my, whether it's myself or one of our staff members or a city group leader doesn't know what's going on. By the way, this is what's so great. This is the benefit about being in city groups. This is the benefit about being a part of a church because there's gotta be some people around you. Now, everybody shouldn't know everything, but somebody should. 
Come on, there, there, there's got to be a few people in your world that do know everything. There's got to be a few people in the world that you feel like you don't have to impress. But man, we struggle, at least I struggle with this. You probably don't. I struggle with this. F feeling like, man, I, man I, I have to have it all together. Christine and I uh, were talking about a, a kind of a funny scenario the other day. We, we were talking about, I wonder at what point, and it would be kind of weird to me. It would be weird to me. It would be a weird moment to me when our kids are embarrassed by me. Like when my kids, when I'm like, hey, let's go see a movie. And they're like, no, I'm good. Like, 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 like that will be a weird scene to me when, when I embarrass my kids. When my, in fact, Christina even asked me about a very specific uh, uh, moment, like a very specific scenario. She goes, what would you do if let's say our kids are eight, nine, 10 years old, whatever, and, and, you, know, and you were driving them to school and they asked you, um, hey, dad, can you drop us off like, like a block or two away from the school so we can walk up like, you know, without having you around? She's like, what would you do? I was like, first of all, that's oddly specific. Is there anything you want to talk about from your childhood? <laughs> but she said, what would you do? I go, oh, that's easy. The more my kids get like that, the more I'm going to dedicate my life with fervor to embarrassing my children. Like, like the, the more they think that, man, I, I'm going to pull up next to the school. I'm going to wait in that, like, godless line that I see parents waiting in uh, outside of middle schools. And, and I'm, I'm going to wait. In, I'm going to grab my kids by the hand. We're going to walk in holding hands. They're going to be juniors in high school. And we're going to be walking in holding hands. Or their other option is they can walk all the way from home. There's another two options. Like, you got me for the whole trip or none at all. It's going to be the rule. And you want, you want to know what you and I do a lot? We do this a lot with God. We do this a lot with God. So what we say is, okay, God, um, I'm cool with you getting me part of the way, but I wanna impress people. And so if you could let me off like two blocks before we get to the destination so I can walk around like I've done this all on my own, like I can walk around like I got here on my own, God, that would be really great. And God would just turn around and say, listen, you either take the ride all the way or you walk from the house. And listen, the walk from the house is tiring. The walk from the house is exhausting. The walk from the house will beat you down. And, and, and so listen, I, I don't wanna get to a place where I think, okay, I just need God for some of the way. I need God for the whole way. Why? Because I am a child of God. In the kingdom of God, there are only children. There are only children. So, so you and I, as we enter this relationship with God, listen, we, we gotta have some boldness and confidence to say, yeah, I'm a child of God, but we also have to have some humility to say, I'm a child of God. To say, man, I, I'm not growing beyond my need for God. So how do you do that? How do you keep your faith childlike? I believe it's right here. You ask, you seek, you knock. Every single day you wake up, you ask, you seek, you knock. And, and here's why that keeps our faith childlike. Number one, when you ask, you ask someone who has greater resources than you. So, so anytime you ask somebody for anything, you're acknowledging that they have more than you in that particular area. And, and so, so listen, when we go to God and we ask him, we are posturing ourselves in a childlike posture because we are asking. The, the other thing that we have to do to keep our faith childlike is to seek, right? You seek when there is something to find. Here's what I've been so grateful for in my relationship with Jesus is that he knows more than I do. This is why I can sing a song like Seasons and go, you know what, God, if you're not done working, I'm not done waiting. Because I know that you know more than me. I know that you have greater understanding. So I'm gonna keep seeking. I'm gonna keep pressing in. And then third and finally, uh, you knock. And when you knock, you are demonstrating that you aren't the authority. Because you only knock on doors where you don't have ultimate authority. Like, you know what I mean? Like when I get to my house this afternoon, I'm not gonna knock on my door before I enter, right? It's my house. I'm gonna walk in. If I came to your house, what would I do? I would knock, why? Because it's your house. And so in our relationship with God, man, you gotta continually be knocking. Why? Because you're demonstrating that you're not the authority, that Jesus Christ is the authority. And so God, I, I'm gonna keep knocking, I'm gonna keep knocking, demonstrating that I don't just get what I want. I don't just enter rooms because I am who I am. Mean, I'm knocking on the rooms that you have put me in front of. And then it finishes with this, verse 11. And in fact, I want to have the team come forward. I want, I want to end with verse 11. And then it says, if you then who are evil, don't you love Jesus? Always like super encouraging. <laughs> if you then who aren't that great, who are actually pretty bad people, know how to give good gifts, 
how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? I love that. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Uh, you ever want, wanted to do something or, or, or maybe you weren't sure about something, but just the title of that thing kind of freaked you out about it? In fact, sometimes I think, I think more people would do certain activities if they weren't marketed so badly by what they were called. Uh, for example, when I was in uh, college, there was this place called the Wing Dome, right? And they had the best wings in town and, and it, was, it was awesome, right? But they, they had this one particular challenge at, um, at, at, like at, the, at the Wing Dome and it was, if you ate X amount of wings, I forget, it was an insane number, but if you ate X amount of wings, uh, you could eat for free at that place for the whole week. And so, and what I, was, what I always thought was kind of funny about it is um, they called it the gut buster challenge. So that's literally what they called it, the gut buster challenge. And just the name alone made it like seem not very appealing to me. Anybody else like, you're just like the gut buster challenge, I'm good, like I'm okay. Now, if they would have called it something like eat X amount of wings for free week of food, I might've tried it. But just because of what it was called. By the way, this is why I think like at first blush, like people aren't even interested in skydiving because it's called skydiving. <laughs> I know Holly Joe talked about like skydiving, nah, like, right? And you're like skydiving. Like think about it, like it's called skydiving, right? Like if it was like float in a parachute in the sky. <laughs> I think it'd be better marketed. I think more people might be interested in it, but it's called skydiving is what it's called, right? You want to know what's interesting in the Bible is there's a theological ter term. It's a normal word ter too, but it, theologians use it a lot, and it's called personification. Personification. And, and what, what, when the Bible says, or when theologians use that term, he, here's what they're saying. They're saying that what the Bible does is the Bible uses titles, everyday titles, and everyday illustrations and everyday imagery so that you and I can, can grasp some sort of understanding about what God's like. And so for example, Jesus, right, even said this about himself. He goes, oh, I wish I was a mother hen. Oh, how I long, you know, if I was a mother hen, I would, I would gather you together when he was talking about the people of Israel. What is he doing? That is personification. The, the Bible says that in the Old Testament that the earth is the Lord's footstool. So it's like God in heaven just like, no, no, it's speaking to the awesomeness and the majesty and the authority that God has, how big God is, right? What is that? Personification. You shall mount up on wings of eagles. Is God really wings of eagles? No, no, it's personification. And that's what the Bible does. But what you gotta understand is, is every illustration of what God is like, because we live in a fallen world, falls drastically short of who God is. But you gotta be careful, just because the illustration falls short doesn't mean God falls short. Just because our understanding of what a father is doesn't mean that God is gonna fall short in the area of being a heavenly father. Here, here, here's what I know, in a room this size, if we all went out to coffee and I just sat down and talked with you uh, and I just said, hey, tell me about your father. Tell me about your relationship with your father. Man, I would hear great stories and I would hear horrific stories. And sometimes, a lot of times, probably even from, from the same people. Because the reality is, is your dad, even, even on his best day, is a human being. And he made mistakes and makes mistakes. Like me on my best day, like I'm gonna fall so short for Justice and Adriana, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna fall so short because I'm a human being. And so to say God is, our Father sometimes could cause some of you to like, whoa, I'm good. But listen, Jesus didn't come to be everything your Father, or to, Jesus didn't come to be like your Father. Jesus came to be everything your Father wasn't and couldn't be because he was a human being. And so you and I gotta be careful that, that we, we don't allow our, our, our visceral responses because of a word stop us from stepping into everything that God has for us as it pertains to a relationship with him. You, 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 listen, God is your father in so much as he wants to provide for you. He wants to give counsel for you. 
He wants to be a shoulder for you to cry on. He wants to be the lifter of your head. He wants to give wise counsel. He wants to be here for you. He, 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 he wants to encourage you when you feel downtrodden. He wants to correct you when you make mistakes. He wants to love you through that correction. He wants to be here for you. See, see you, you and I, man, we, we can't be freaked out. I, I love that he says, listen, if you then who are evil, if, you, if, if your earthly fathers know how to give good gifts and every once in a while they get it right, how much more will I be able to fulfill the things that were left unfulfilled by your father? If you're in this room and you just say, man, I want a closer relationship with God. Listen, no matter where you're at, whether you came in here walking with God or not, it don't get much closer than an everlasting father. It doesn't get much closer than an everlasting father. How encouraging that hundreds of years before Jesus came, one of his hallmarks was gonna be that he would be our everlasting father. What a beautiful reality that you and I have access to today here at Grace City Church because of what Jesus Christ did on a cross and what he offers to you today.